Hello, everybody. Thanks for being here with me. I have to preface this um, tutorial I'm doing by a little something. I just want to really thank you guys for being here with me as I'm learning this whole YouTube thing. Uh, this, by the way, is what we're going to be painting today. I thought it'd be fun to paint some herbs. Um, I didn't realize how challenging uh, it would be to paint to be thinking about what I want to tell you, to be sharing, you know, what supplies I'm using, um, kind of watching the camera. It's a lot to think about, you guys. <laughs> I don't know how these wonderful artists do it so easily, but I'm getting there. And I'm getting better with my uh, camera videoing. So thanks for being with me during these, um, kind of this learning curve for me. I'm much better at Instagram, by the way, and Facebook, if you ever want to pop over there and say hello to me. Been on there for a long time. So today, this time of year, although I'm, I'm in Southern California and we are just getting nonstop rain, I'm beginning to wonder if the sun will ever come out. Um, it's a good thing, but because uh, we need it. But normally right now, I'm starting to think of all my beautiful herbs, which I love to grow because I love to cook. And I did a little compilation here of the ones that I like. Um, we've got rosemary here. Uh, my olive tree is starting. Oregano. My lavender, which has lasted all year this year, which is really great. Basil I use all the time. A little bit of sage here, which I love. Cilantro and some chamomile, which I thought was just kind of fun. So these are different herbs I'm going to be going through today with you on how to paint and or how I paint them. And I think, again, these are always just fun little additions to if you're doing a little bouquet or something like that. They're really fun. So I'm using my Princeton Number no. 8 Velvet Touch Brush. This is the round um, I also have here, because this is brand new, my 12 Princeton round, but not sure if I will use that today or not. I've got my student grade 140-pound uh, cold press paper, um, although this is kind of an inexpensive paper, um, but it'll work for these purposes. If, by the way, you invest in anything, my opinion, I'm sure there's other people that would maybe think differently, but I say invest in the paper because that will make such a big difference. Get decent brushes, of course. You want ones that are kind of snappy and have a nice point on them, but boy, the paper makes a big difference. If it's really cheap and bad paper, it'll warp, it'll absorb weird, you'll have puddles, and you'll be you know, messaging me saying, my painting doesn't look anything like yours, Deborah. So today we're going to be using olive and sap green. These are all Winsor Newton paints. I'm also going to be using a little bit of uh, violet. I think it's purple violet is the Winsor Newton color. Um, and maybe a little cad orange and cad yellow for the little chamomile. So let's go ahead and get started. This will be using all the strokes that I go over with you a lot, which is the thin lines, the C strokes, um, you know, some of, I call them dab strokes. I don't know what you call them, but these little dabs. So go ahead and get your paintbrush, your paper, and let's get started. All right, so I'm going to first do, um, Let's do, why don't we start with olive? I really like olive. So I'm going to actually use my olive color. And as always, I like my paint consistency to be kind of like tea. So it's a little bit thinner than coffee. And I'm going to mix both the olive color and the sap green color. So it's got this really nice watery consistency. So using the thin line, the tip of your brush, you're going to start out with just, uh, you know, the branch here of the olive tree. I have olives in my backyard, by the way, and kind of in a C curve. And I love, love my olives. I cut them all the time. I bring them in the house and put them with my flowers. 
So I should have brought a branch in, matter of fact. But anyway, so for the leaves, the leaves on my olive tree are quite long and skinny. So I'm going to start with press, point, and these long, I love the olive tree uh, leaves. I think they're really beautiful. And then let's point, press, point, press, and they kind of go all different directions. Point, press, they kind of overlap each other, point, press. And mine actually have a lot of brown in them, point, press, but point, press, they are quite long leaves. So hopefully you guys have been practicing this stroke because it's used constantly, or for me, this is the stroke I mainly use. Point, press, and these leaves, I'm gonna wait and add in some different values of green as I talk to, just to add in some interest. I'm gonna add just a little bit of green gold, which is Windsor Newton, although most of my leaves are pretty much more of this sap and olive green, but see that gives a little bit of interest. And then I noticed on mine, before the olives come out, they come out on these little tiny, so I'm using the tip, very light pressure, these little tiny branches, and they're just these little seeds like so. And then they will turn into the olives. The other thing is the olives on my tree, making sure too you have your two glasses, your two containers of water, one to wash, one to rinse. Um, and then just dabbing my brush a little on here to get that excess water. The olives on mine come out this purpley, deep, kind of deep purple brown color. So I'm mixing just a tiny bit of that purple violet with just a little bit of the, let's see, what is this? Burnt umber. I've got it in my palette here. So I'm going to make that a little bit watery and you'll just start seeing them come out. So I'm also going to mix a little bit of green in there and they start coming out, oh, maybe in August. I want to say it's kind of exciting actually. So there we go. Add a little more green to that. And they're quite hard, even when I go to pick them in November. So there's a couple little olives. I'll add maybe a couple more. You know, actually, I'm going to do the leaves. Let's switch up the value of my paint, which I'm going to use the same green paint, but I'm going to use less water, which means the value, it's going to be darker. So let's add in a couple of those. Point press like so, point press, like this, point press, like so. So those darker leaves, again, kind of push their way out. I'm just going to use a little bit of this gold green color, which is really pretty actually. I'm kind of liking it. It's kind of got this like, khaki look. So point press. There we go. Look at that. Point press like so. And then I'm going to wash, rinse my brush, dab it off. And let's go in and make some of these little olives. There we go. Now again, I, you know, I paint just where I like them and it looks nice to me. This isn't exactly going to be correct how they grow, but you know what? This is my painting and I'm going to do what I want. And I suggest you do too. Just have fun with your paintings. They normally grow in these little bunches. There you go, I'm gonna add just a tad of purple to each of those. I actually recently stayed at a winery and they had olives there. I actually bought some of the olive oil. 
It was really fun. So there you go. Now you can add in more olives for you, but that's an olive, olive branch. And then the next one I think I will do is maybe oregano because I think that one's kind of fun. And I use oregano actually all year, but it doesn't grow in my garden all year. This palette, by the way, a couple of you have asked me is from Mist, M-I-S-T Ceramics. She's on Instagram if you want to follow her. She makes a lot of fun things. So the oregano has quite some long branches. They kind of grow all inside each other. Or this is my version of them. And I really just create my oregano like this. I am gonna darken up that color though, because my oregano I have is a little bit darker. And I'm sure there's different types of oregano, but mine seems to be a little bit darker. And I'm gonna try and use the point, see what that looks like. Yeah, I think I like that better. Yeah, I like that. Just push down harder if you want a longer leaf. There we go. Maybe some smaller ones kind of change up the colors in there I think is always fun so I'm using the point there we go make some small ones make some large ones there we go and I'm just dabbing I'm gonna add a little bit of water make some finer ones my oregano always seems to be kind of bushy. I don't know if yours does. Like I said, I'm sure there's different kinds of oregano. But these would be really fun to throw into your paintings. Like if you haven't watched it, I did a uh, tutorial yesterday on cotton. B-O-L-L-S, cotton, and I was so happy one of you educated me on those, said she'd been picking cotton for years, and I thought those were fun to put into your painting. So this is oregano, and how easy was that, you guys? Very easy. So let's do some basil. My basil is quite a just the typical green color, and the leaves are much bigger. So I'm going to do my branch here. And then just put some stems. Maybe like that. And I noticed my basil how fun would it have been if I had a little piece of each of these herbs? I try to do that with my flowers, but my basil is fat at the bottoms and then comes to kind of a point. So what I would do is start at the point and then kind of come around, push into and flatten out your brush, okay? I'm going to grab a little bit more paint here and show you what I mean. So point, press, flatten out, and come back up to that point. So I'm flattening out and using the belly of my brush to make a lot of this. Point, press in, and now draw up to that point and then do the other half. Press. And you can kind of circle it around because I know the basil I have, it's quite fat. Press and then bring to a point. Press, bring to a point. There you go. Okay, so that's what my basil looks like. 
Maybe there's different kinds of basils. I'm sure there is. Let me try for a little different green here. Let's see, what could we use? I'm gonna try this green. I don't usually use it. I think it's called Semlier Green. Let's see what that looks like. Point. Ooh, that's kind of nice. I like that. So point and then come around. You know, sometimes too, you have to kind of play with this and see which direction is easier for you. Now I'm just tapping into the edges of these leaves just kind of to give it some interest. If that's too hard of a line, you can pull the paint down. Just encourage it to move down. This paper I'm using isn't the best, so, or if you wanted to lift some of it up, just use a dry brush and lift it up. Okay, so I'm going to use a little bit more. Oh, I'm pretty happy. I've had this, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, Sennelier Green on my palette for a long time, and I never use it. Point press, point press, and get these dark leaves. I'm going to mix that with a little bit of that green and let's see what we get. Point press, point press, and then you can fill it in. There we go. Oh, I like that. So I kind of mixed that green in with the sap green and that was really pretty. And I'm allowing these to kind of touch, point press, and they mix beautifully. There we go. Okay, so that's pretty much what my basil looks like. I'm just gonna write that right here. And then let's see, what should we do next? Let's do some cilantro, that's a fun one. I use that all year long. I cook quite a bit with some Indian type dishes and they use a lot of cilantro. So I use a lot of cilantro. So let's see, although I haven't been able to ever grow it for some reason, not sure why, it always dies, it turns yellow and dies. So thin stroke using the tip of your brush. That got a little thicker than I really wanted it to. And let's just have some of these leaves come out. I notice cilantro is typically really leafy, which makes it kind of hard to cut. You have to kind of get it away from the branches. Now this really turned out thicker than I, I wanted, but that's okay. So let's just Make some more branches here. And then the leaves are kind of spiky, but that they have a round bottom. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna actually use a little bit of that pretty green I just discovered on my palette. So funny, it's been there forever and I never use it. It's kind of exciting. And I'm going to do some more here. So I'm just pointing, 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 dabbing circle around and then like that kind of fun point all these little points and then just come around yeah uh, cilantro can be kind of a pain to cook with i think it's really yummy but it's always hard to get those stems out isn't it okay so point there we go and I'm going to vary my color here in a minute, just kind of rounding out the edge. So I'm really letting the brush do the work, as you can see here. I'm going to rinse a little bit of that paint off and do a lighter version of that. And let's see if I can turn my paper a little bit so that it's easier. So point. Now I've got a little bit too much water on there for my liking, so I just dab it on my paper towel. And then continuing, making these little leaves. I think I'm gonna put one in the background here. There we go. Go into my paint. 
and let's turn the paper here so I can get to this one. So point, creating these little, like so, and then maybe one more here, which I'm going to do very light point. So it looks like it's maybe a little in the background. Maybe just one right here, kind of doing this sideways, like so. And then one last one, I think I will, let's see, where should we put it? Right here. So I'm gonna turn my paper, point, 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 and then bring it around, just like that. So I think that's pretty representative of cilantro, don't you? Excuse my arm. So let's just write cilantro there. How fun would these be and unique? I always like to find fun filler flowers. I think that's really fun and interesting. Um, so how about let's do, um, <gasps> rosemary is a good one. That's a good one. Um, and the rosemary that I see is usually around here a little darker green. Now that might have a little bit more brown in it. And it's always got all kinds of crazy pieces coming out of it, right? Got a little water on my paper here. So let's move this up. And the stalks tend to be around here anyway. Like I said, you know, it may grow differently in different places, but this is how I see it. So I'm going to get a little bit more of my green. There we go because it's quite a dark green here where it grows. And I'm just going to start making these lines. Okay, now our, our rosemary here, and I'm using just the tip of my brush. And our rosemary here, boy, it kind of, it's got a lot of stuff going on in there, but I'm gonna let this dry and then go in. So let's just get these first. And they kind of stick out all different directions here. These, this first coat, cause I don't wanna get this all in a big muddy mess. So I'm gonna kind of let this dry and then I will go in with a little different green. So I'm just a very much light pressure, hardly touching at all. And I'm going in <clears throat> and I'm creating all these little lines just with the tip of my brush, very little water. Yeah, I always think rosemary is kind of fun to work with because when you cut it, you can just pull the leaves off the opposite direction. I'm gonna change up the color of that green. <clears throat> I don't think rosemary really has yellow in it, but I'm gonna put yellow in mine because I think that might be kind of fun. Okay. Yeah, I think that's kind of pretty and fun. Now I might go in after and just to create some depth. I might add some darker greens to kind of pull them out. So let's go in and do that. Let's, when I say a darker green, what I mean by that is not necessarily the color is darker, but more paint. <clears throat> let's see what that does. Yeah, that's what I like. I like that. They used to have this rosemary growing in huge bushes in front of my daughter's school. And every time I drop her off, I could smell it. And I asked the school one time, I said, wow, if I ever need rosemary, I could just come here and get it. And they said, no, no, don't, don't take our rosemary. Who knows what they're spraying on it? So I thought that was a good little warning. Okay, so there is our rosemary. 
Let's see, what should we do next? Um, how about some sage? Sage is great with chicken, right? Now our sage out here, I think they refer to it as white sage, and it's almost got a bluish color too, and it's got the most beautiful long leaves and kind of thick. So let's do the stem here, light pressure using the tip of our brush, and then let's do point, and they're quite thick here. So these are similar to the olive, but I feel like the leaves are a little bit thicker. So thin, thick, really push into that brush and get that big, wide, beautiful leaf like that. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of blue because ours do, I feel like, have some blue in them. So let's just point, press. Now I'm really pressing into my, got some little pieces there, my brush to get that wide leaf. Point, press. And out here we, we actually burn sage. It smells wonderful. Point, Press, widen out that, use the belly of that brush. Let's get some more paint here and create a little bit more. This grows wild out here too, and it's just beautiful. Point on a hike I did recently, I could really smell it and it was so wonderful. So let's point, press, and then lift up. There you go. So these are all, by the way, in my book, my little ebook that you can get for free. The link is in my, um, I should put it in my description. Maybe I'll do that. But it is in my bio. Point, press, just like this. There you go. Not pretty. I'm going to add in a little bit more of that blue. Point, press. These leaves are quite long. And then I'm going to go back in as soon as a little bit of that dries and maybe do a darker hue of that. Let's add it in. Let's try, let me see, what should we try? Hmm, what green is this? I think this one might be phalo green, another color I never use. Let's see what that is. I've got a little too much water, so I'm just gonna dab it on my paper towel point. Press, oh, that's pretty, that's a pretty green like that. I think it needs to be a little darker. Point, press. Ooh, that is pretty. Point, press. Now, I don't think our sage is quite that color, but you know what? It's my painting, and it's your painting. You could paint them purple if you wanted to. So there's some sage. And our sage that grows out here, like I said, it's got a bluish, silverish, beautiful tint to it. So I think our last little herb, which I pick and buy a lot, is let's go with, let's see, lavender or chamomile. Let's do some chamomile because it's kind of an interesting little plant. I can't grow it very well either, by the way. So if anybody's got any tips for that, I'd sure love them. I love my chamomile tea. Okay, so chamomile is almost kind of bushy-ish. So let's just do this thin little stem. And then it's got all these little pieces coming out. And then 
they almost look like little tiny baby ferns. So what the, the technique I'm going to use is that dabbing. So dab, 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 dab. Just dabbing to get those ferny like, like this. Just a little tiny, cute little leaves. Let's put that on all of these. Almost like little tiny bushes. There we go. So I'm gonna do that for all these little, exactly, that's exactly what I wanted it to look like making sure I'm using very light pressure. Get a little bit more paint on these to get these little tiny brush strokes. And then we'll go in and chamomile has these beautiful little flowers that we'll add in. Now I might go in just adding more of these little fluffy leaves. So easy to do. And this, you know, would be a wonderful little filler too for your paintings in between your flowers. So let me show you the little, they're almost like little mini daisies, I think. That's how I see them. Um, and they typically, ours here have this little yellow center. So let's create a couple of those, maybe one right here, one right here, and they're very tiny. And then the leaves are more of a whitish color. So I'm just going to barely get my brush wet. And I'm just going to come barely touch the tip to that middle center and pull out. So really that's a little yellower than I would like. I really wanted to get like maybe more of a white color, but that's okay. And they have these little tiny petals that come out. Now these, like I said, they're turning out kind of yellow. That's fine like that. They're so cute. I'm going to add another one down here just for interest. Okay. And then let's make the little stem. They are so cute. I just love them. And then I think I'll add some little leaves on here because they are quite bushy and then let's go in with a clear water on my brush and just bring out these little petals and maybe go back into the middle with a tiny bit of orange for the center, just like that, just to create a little bit of differentiation. So there you go. So I think those are pretty. Oops, I left out this one's stem here. Let's give it a little bit of a stem. There we go. So there you go. I hope that was fun for you. And this is using all of the brush strokes I talk about a lot. Um, this one is chamomile. And again, if you'd like to grab my free ebook, you can go to, um, you can either email me, which my email is in my bio. Um, you can message me, however you wanna do it, and I'll go ahead and send that out to you. I'm trying to gather some names for an email list, although I probably won't have any type of newsletter that goes out until the end of the year, because that's kind of new for me. Um, but anyways, enjoy painting with these and thank you for being here with me as I'm learning and getting better. I hope you will try some of these. I think they'll be really fun in your um, 
flower paintings and they're relatively easy to do. All right, well, I hope to see you again soon. If you like this, please like my page and come back. I'd love to hear your comments and, and be able to answer any questions I can. And I will see you soon, friends. Okay, bye-bye.